Someone turn the microphone on, we can't hear you. Yeah. Thank you. 
completely immobile a lot of them and totally unable to defend themselves against any other children who might be around. The second issue that makes them very vulnerable is in relation to knowing them. They can't tell you if they're ill, they can't tell you if they're uncomfortable, they can't tell you if they're unhappy. Um, and it's only with the absolute experience and skill set current staff who know the children well enough to ensure that the children don't go past the point of Coming overly ill and nothing can be done about it. Um, we regularly have children ambulance and blue light it out because they fall critically ill so quickly. This is vitally, vitally important as part of when you say that education, really education is probably five percent. Um, care and understanding is, is ninety-five percent of what our children receive in school. Um, and without that understanding and without that level of expertise and confidence, they simply wouldn't be able to go. And if any of our parents thought for one second children were sort of risking them to school, they wouldn't be able to go. And specifically when you've asked about the other schools, there are two schools that have now been put forward. Um, Stanley School, which has no children at PMLD at all. Um, Emma works in Stanley School, so she's well able to tell you a first-hand experience what that school is like. Um, I'll just let her do that in a second. And Ellery Park School, who have a very, very small number, a very relatively small number of children like ours. Uh, and simply don't have the space or the, I mean, to say, the widespread expertise to deal with them. But I mean, Emma is probably best to speak to tell you about Stanley. Basically, regarding the medical um, sort of situation, staff at Stanley School are probably have to provide an education for children at Stanley, but they are not trained medically and we do not have a team to deliver and create a curriculum that is known as a, a medical trained staff. Um, such as gastroscopy, feeding, and medicine, and oxygen, we have the training in epilepsy. Um, the list goes on. The Lindale teachers really are in, um, the system to, to give it to our children, and that's not the case in Stanley School. And I can only speak in that way because I work there on the provider, and I see this, and I know this.
when we, when we started raising issues about other schools, we were assured by Julia Hassel every time we raised an issue, we process um, outside space. It's, it's, it's important to our children inside space. Um, the sensory nature of our school, um, the hydro facilities, the levels of staffing, the levels of nursing care. Every time we we raised a query in relation to that, the answer was, well, don't worry because. If it can't be replicated in the new school, it will not meet the SEN improvement test. And that was kind of, I think, supposed to be a bit of a reassurance to us that, that any of the new provision would would be the same as or better than what, what we already have. But what seems to have happened is when in, in the um, in, in the expert report, the SEN improvement test seems to concentrate on on value and the size of the school. Um, in fact, the only comments that are made, I don't know if I'm but the comments that are made in relation to Sensory garden and the outside space are the new provision will 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 try and basically will will try and make some provision for that. There is nothing in place. Um, Stanley School, the outside space is entirely unsuitable for the children. There's probably I think approximately 200 children playing in one small area in the inside of a horseshoe shaped building. A lot of our children have noise related procedures and in fact can't handle any non differentiated noise at all because of visual problems seizure activity or stress related illnesses. There is no quiet space for them. There is no sensory space for them. There is no space for them to use the, the big bikes, the wheelchair bikes that you've seen. The same in Henry Park. It's a very tightly packed school. All the outside space is occupied by other children who are that they considerably more able and considerably noisier than our school. Neither of the schools has an appropriate area for the children to be on the outside. Neither of them has the same um, sensory setup as we have in Lindale. Stanley is, is a very white school. Their hall is completely white. Their swimming pool is completely white. Ours has flashing lights, it has disco balls, as you can see. We have it, it's festooned with color. The children have a different color and scent for every day of the week, so they know what day it is. They are completely different provisions. And what we're saying is, that how can the local authority say that the SEN improvement test has been met when the provisions don't exist in the other school? We haven't even got a detailed plan of our local school to say, well, this is where it's going to be. This is going to be the outside space. This is going to be their classroom. This is going to be how we're going to replicate these schools. The other issue that nobody yet has even seems to have given any thought to is that our children currently have freedom in the school to move about the school completely enough for safety. Scott can see drives his own chair around the school. Now that is a big part of his day. He can't do that at home, but he can do that in school and it avoids a lot of frustration because he's a young man who's very, very mentally able but physically not so able. That, again, has not even been mentioned in relation to the school. And what we're saying is how can that test be met when that provision simply just does not exist? Um, I've got clear.
the point I'm, the point I'm making is this equipment has been added to over the years. Yeah. So it's been it, no, it, it didn't just all appear. Yeah. Yeah. It's been added to over the years. So so we're yeah. up